Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. Today a good friend of mine gave me a broken M18 fuel impact driver. While he was at work he was on a ladder and unfortunately the M18 took a tumble and hit the ground. Now it seems to be intermittent. It comes on once and won't come on again and unreliable and because of that it's no good to him. So let's see if we can fix it. Milwaukee Fuel Brushless. This is an impact driver. Nothing special. I happen to really like the Milwaukee brand of impact drivers. I like all their tools. This is a friend's. He dropped it off a ladder. Only works once or twice. Doesn't... Whoa. Intermittent after that. So we're going to take it apart and see what we find inside. No guarantees, but I'm hoping we can fix it. These are expensive. This is over $200 Canadian. In order to get these screws out, these are a T10, but they have a security uh, extrusion in the center. Luckily, a while ago I purchased one set, and I happen to have the T10 driver. It's an extended reach Torx bit. I got it through AliExpress. I'll see if I can find the link and I'll post it below. But you need one of these. Well, I found the listing from AliExpress. This is a five piece Torx screwdriver bit. It does a T10, T15, 20, 25, and 30. Very inexpensive at about $6.74 Canadian. They are now charging about $4.24 for shipping. When I bought it, there was free shipping. That was before the COVID hit. This is a nice set of screwdriver bits. They're long reach, they're narrow, so they fit into tight spaces. Now back to the disassembly. In order to get the screws out, a regular Torx T10 will not work. You need the security bit with the hole in the driver. Hope that's showing up. So here we go. Okay, total of two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Now let's see if we can get this apart. It can be a struggle trying to take things apart that you've never had apart before. It's also a struggle taking things apart that you have no manual for. So if you're trying to repair your Milwaukee fuel impact driver, look at my diagram. If you notice at the bottom, there are two long screws. There are a total of nine screws. There's only one medium sized screw and it goes to the left of the direction control. Two screws in the handle.
Okay, first examination. It looks awfully dirty. This is a contractor's drill. Everything seems to be potted. So all the electronics, the microcontroller that deals with the brushless is down in here. This appears to be the control module for the, the battery. Speed control. So we'll take a little bit of cleaner and clean it up to see what we find. Maybe it's something simple. Maybe it's just a, a cracked terminal somewhere that we can solder. So let's have a look. Okay, here it is apart. We've taken the head assembly off with the chuck. It leaves a brushless motor. I don't know how well it'll show up. There's obviously some dirt. Some of it appears to be magnetic, so it might be metal dust. And it appears that we've got some cold solder joints on these points. So I'm going to clean this all up, hit it with the soldering iron, and we'll see if that fixes it. Well-built machine. Seems to be uh, very robust. The case is good. I don't see any cracks. Bearing seems nice. Power control unit's nice. I'm quite impressed. Nice little box. Q-tips used for electronic cleaning. Little mixture I use for cleaning things. It's mostly isopropyl alcohol, but there are some other cleaners that I use. And I won't bore you with the uh, excruciating, tedious cleaning process, but that's basically what I'm going to be doing. Soaking it a little bit, brushing it, cleaning it, and then eventually soldering it. You can see this gunk is starting to come off now. Be back once it's all cleaned up. Didn't take long. I did have to use an old toothbrush and a nylon bristle brush. But I've got most of the gunk out. Now I'll be working on the electronic contacts. I've got most of the grime off the trigger assembly. I'll con continue to clean that up. And once we're done, we'll see if she works. As usual, my workbench is a little cluttered because I've been busy with about three other projects all at the same time. So I've moved most of the junk out of the way. I've got a nice hot soldering iron. I've got some solder flux. And we've got the solder. I don't know how well this is going to show up on film, but we're going to give it a try. So what we want to do is reheat these contacts and add a bit of clean solder. And hopefully that will solve the problem. Intermittent contacts are difficult to track down. It could be in the windings, it could be just about anywhere. But we're going to see what we can do. I'll try to keep my big fat fingers out of the way so you can see the action. I think we're going to turn that up just a bit. I suspect they've used non-lead solder on this, which is why it's gone kind of gray. The battery contacts all look good. 
let's hope that's all we needed. I think I'm going to put a little bit of grease in there. That's a, a gearbox. And likewise, I'm going to lubricate this back bearing. Maybe a sealed bearing, but a little bit of lubrication wouldn't hurt it anyways. And we'll also put some on the teeth that are about to mate up with the gearbox. Not sure what grease to use in the gearbox, but I figure good old wheel bearing grease should work. For the electronic components to protect it from the weather, I'm going to use some corrosion preventative sealant. That should keep it problem free when it's out in the moisture. This is a contractor, he is busy, he is working hard in the rain. Let's keep it good and clean for him. Good old red and ta tacky. And now we'll start assembling. Okay, I've got all the parts back together again. It's kind of tricky putting it together. Um, Milwaukee's done a nice job of fitting a lot of things in such, such a tight space. It's very much a puzzle putting it back together again. Uh, there's a little spring on this to make it spring loaded and that was tricky to get in. Um, but let's give it a try for the first try. Uh, let's hope there's no smoke. Uh, lights on. Don't know if the light's supposed to stay. Oh, there goes the light. Speed indicator is on still. I don't know how long that's supposed to be on for. I don't have a fuel. So right now we are in reverse and it's working. Forward, working. Put it into low speed. Second speed. Third. Fourth. All seems to be pretty good. Now, this light right here, not sure if you can see it on camera. It's staying on. I might have to take this cold, the uh, little control board out and solder them as well. I'm not sure why that would be staying on. And it's not timing out. Well, I was pleasantly surprised to be able to fix this. I'm sure my friend will be happy and be able to use this tool for many years after this. As always, thank you very much for watching. To keep me motivated to do more videos, please click the subscribe and maybe even give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much.